Hey everyone, I'm Trevor and today we're at SeaWorld San Diego to share with you the ultimate ride guide. We're gonna show you every single ride in the park and tell you everything you need to know about it. So let's get going. When you first walk into the park, take note of this ride height chart, which will help you determine the rides your children are tall enough for. Think he's touching. He's touching. He's touching. Stand up straight. No. Well, no. There's a little bit of space there. We're gonna start off with the little kid rides, which you can get to by coming in the entrance and turning right and going through this light tunnel here. The first of these is Aqua Scout. Only one adult can fit per vehicle and children under 36 inches will need to be accompanied in their ride vehicle. Now it is temporarily closed today, but here's some footage of the last time when we rode it. It's a Dumbo style attraction with a fun hydraulic lift that creates a bouncing sensation. I've never seen this before anywhere in any other theme park. Right next door is Sea Dragon Drop, which is a miniature drop ride. Adults can ride Sea Dragon Drop. I've done it a few times, but it's not very comfortable. The ride itself, however, is a good first drop ride for your budding daredevil. And right next to that is Octa Rock, which is a hydraulic swing ride that has a minimum height requirement of 31 inches. And to ride alone, your child must be a minimum of 36 inches. Adults can ride this, but it does have a maximum height requirement of 73 inches. Across the path from these three rides is Tentacle Twirl, which is our first of what I'd consider an intermediate attraction. This ride has a minimum height requirement of 40 inches to ride tandem with an adult and is 48 inches to ride alone. This is your typical swing ride and is one of my youngest son's favorite rides in the park. If it's been more than a year since you've been to SeaWorld San Diego, this will be new for you. The area that used to be Sesame Bay of Play has been rethemed to SeaWorld Rescue Junior. This was to eliminate confusion with SeaWorld's newest water park, Sesame Place, which opened in nearby Chula Vista in March of 2022. The rides here are the same as they've always been, but with new SeaWorld Rescue themes. First, we have Tidepool Twist, which is a spinning teacup style ride that I avoid if at all possible. My children love it though, and sometimes they drag me on it. This ride features a 42 inch height requirement to ride alone. The next ride is Rescue Riders. This is another Dumbo style attraction, but in the more traditional sense that you can control whether it goes up or down. As you see, this ride is also not working today. Uh, the footage you're seeing is when it used to be called Elmo's Flying Fish. I actually haven't ridden it since the re-theme. There's nothing surprising here, and this is a great family ride. Children must be 48 inches to ride alone. Uh, you can be any height to ride it with an adult. The last ride in this area is Rescue Rafter. This is a rocking and spinning hybrid and is another ride that tends to make me sick. I send my kids on this by themselves if I can. In order to do that, children must be a minimum of 42 inches. Before we move on to some of the more intense rides in the park, I want to talk about two rides that require an additional fee in order to ride them here at SeaWorld San Diego. The first is the Sky Tower. This is a slow moving experience that takes you high into the air and gives you an aerial view of SeaWorld and the nearby city of San Diego. It rotates as it rises, giving you a full view of the whole area. And the last paid ride is the Bayside Sky Ride. This is a sky bucket style ride that takes you out over the water and back. Annual pass holders actually get free admission to both of these rides, but fun cards aren't eligible, so keep that in mind. Each ticket is $6 a person for both of these attractions. As we are walking to our next attraction, let's talk about how busy it is today. This is the uh, holiday season and it is just slammed crazy busy here. The busiest times of the year here at SeaWorld San Diego are gonna be spring break, summer, and Christmas. If you'd like more general tips to help you plan the best vacation to SeaWorld San Diego, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button a little later on this week. We'll be launching our ultimate guide for 2024. The next ride we're gonna discuss is Riptide Rescue. With a height requirement of 45 inches, this ride is a bit more intense than the previous rides we've covered on the store so far. It's a claw slash scrambler style attraction that swings and spins you around in the air. It looks a little nausea inducing, but it's not too bad and it's a good intermediate thrill ride. From here on out, we've reached what I consider the adult thrill rides. 
We'll start with the two water rides, which both have a 42 inch height requirement to ride. The first is Shipwreck Rapids. This ride features a raft that seats up to eight people and spins frequently throughout the ride. As you go over rapids and under waterfalls, whether you get wet depends on where you are in the raft at any given time. This ride is one with a disclaimer where you will get wet, you may get soaked. They do have dryers available just outside the ride if you don't have a change of clothes. Journey to Atlantis is the other water ride located on the opposite side of the park. This is a boat slash roller coaster hybrid, which is a fan favorite at SeaWorld San Diego. You start off going up a lift hill only to plunge straight down into a tidal wave of water. From here, you'll actually take an elevator back up before going through a series of turns and dips and splashing down a second time. It's a unique ride well worth your consideration. Journey to Atlantis also has some dryers available just outside the ride exit. The next two rides are considered family coasters. The first is Manta, which is easily the most popular ride at SeaWorld San Diego and for good reason. Its fast launch, twists and turns and drops provide a fair bit of air time. With only a lap restraint, you feel every bit of the thrill of this family friendly coaster with a 48 inch height requirement. The second of the family coasters is also SeaWorld San Diego's newest coaster, which opened in June of 2023, and that's Arctic Rescue. It's the longest, fastest straddle coaster on the West Coast, featuring three separate launches. It rides and feels very similar to Manta, but with a different ride vehicle that provides an overall different experience. Before we get into the final coasters, I wanna talk about a few important features that you wanna keep in mind when it comes to rides. The first is going to be Child Swap. Now, while there isn't any specific official Child Swap service here at SeaWorld San Diego, like there is at Disneyland or Universal Studios, they do have that service available. You just ask the ambassador at the front of the attraction, but I believe the way it works is the whole family waits in line, and then when you get up to the ride, the, the adult who's gonna sit out with the child who is not tall enough to ride or does not want to ride, will wait just at the exit and then when the ride finishes the adults will switch. Uh, the other service that you want to keep in mind is Quick Queue. When rides are really long, especially the popular rides like Arctic Rescue today, it's a 90 minute wait. I mean, just check out this line. You'll want to consider Quick Queue. The Quick Queue is a service that allows you to bypass the line. They cost different amounts of money. You have to check out online which one you're interested in. And finally, the bigger coasters, that being Emperor, Electric Eel, Manta, and Arctic Rescue require lockers. You cannot take loose items and articles, bags and things like that on the ride. You must get a locker. These are not free, but they do have them in each and every one of those rides that require it. Looks like locker rental is now $3. And finally, there are two rides that are for the daredevils in your family, the ultimate in adrenaline junkies. The first ride is Emperor with a height requirement of 52 inches. This is my favorite coaster in all of SeaWorld San Diego. It features a suspended drop and three inversions at high speeds. The coaster is super smooth and is one of the newest in the park, which opened in March of 2022. And the last ride for our SeaWorld San Diego ride guide is Electric Eel. It's the most intense ride in the park and one that many of you will take one look at and pass. It's got a height requirement of 54 inches and features both forward and backward movement. The scariest moment is a few seconds of complete upside down suspension at the top of the ride with nothing holding you in but a lap belt. The over the shoulder restraint is purely aesthetic. This is a fun coaster, but it's not for everyone. Well, there you have it. Every single ride at SeaWorld San Diego in 2024. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions I didn't answer, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. Click this video to keep watching. Thanks for watching, and we will see you again next time.